All right, YouTube. I think that I'm live. I think that I'm sharing my screen. And I had two people who jumped on my last. I had two people that jumped in my last live that I just shot. I've taken it down because I had a, a mishap there. I couldn't get on there. Um, so hopefully, I'm wasting time here. I'm trying to get to my own video. Trying to get to my own video so I can just, yep, okay, there I am. Hello. Alright. Okay, so I believe I'm there. I see myself on my phone there. Okay, so thanks for tuning in there, YouTubes. Of course, I don't have open my screen where I can see if anybody's chatting. So maybe, wife, maybe I'll hand you the phone and maybe you can see if people chat. So, let me minimize this screen now. Alright, so now I'm looking at my YouTube screen. Huh. Well, hello to the one watching. Alright, so I'm now looking at this screen, so I'll minimize this. Actually, I'll put that back up. I'm going to go to that. And then I'm going to minimize this. Okay, so hopefully, right now, I'll check with my wife. We can see just my desktop. Okay, and down there in the corner. You can see me. All right. So this is about utilizing my N3 FJP logging software, which is this emblem right here that I just moved. When I open this, this is my N3 FJP. This is the software in which I use in order to log all my contacts. So for instance, if I come over here to where it says call, my uh, cursor's down there, and let's just say for instance, I just made a contact over the air. Um, let's say uh, I contacted a station called uh, KT4FQ. I'll hit my tab button on my keyboard. Boom. That fills out all his information. So it tells me his name, address of the person there. It has the date. But let's say I talked to him on uh, the 2 meter band and I talked to him via, uh, via FM. There we go. So that's how I talked to him. Alright. So, you know what, it's not going to, alright, so I guess it's on FM now, there we go. So I talked to him via FM, and I talked to him on uh, 144.580. Sorry folks, what's happening is my radio is on, so my radio is taking control of my screen here. Sorry, 144, 146.580 megahertz, and I talked to him via FM, there we go, and I was talking on, uh, 20 watts of power it automatically puts in today's time that we started and this is RST signal this video is mainly for my ham radio operators RST means how well do I hear him how well does he hear me what country he's in so forth so Tennessee and I would hit log contact now that I've logged that contact if you notice at the top of my log I have KT4FQ what frequency the date the time so forth I guess you could read all that but if you notice, it's all in black. Okay? And it's in black because it's just something I just now typed in a log. Now, I'm not going to log it right now because I'm not talking to this gentleman on two meters at this time. This is just an example here. Alright. So I'm going to delete that one from my log because I didn't make that contact just now. Yes, I'm sure. Okay. But in my log, you do see that I have certain ones that are blue and I have certain ones that are green. These green ones represents ones over here in this S and R column means have I sent have I sent confirmation that I spoke to them? Have I received confirmation that I spoke to them? So if they're they are blue, I have sent and received confirmations. The S and the R describes how I sent it and how I received confirmation. Whether it was EQSL, which is a virtual logbook that's on the internet, or another virtual logbook called Logbook. Logbook of the world, excuse me, logbook of the world. 
So EL represents logbook of the world. So VK3, Lima, Delta, Bravo, David, via FT8 as a mode on the 15 meter band, sent and received a Q uh, contact confirmation. I sent it via logbook of the world and I received confirmation from him via logbook of the world that we have made a contact. The one in green, Victor Alpha 6 Delta Tango X-ray, I have sent but not received. So here I will go to the top where it says e-logs. I'm going to click it and I'm going to click eqsl and I'll hit download. Download all since uh, let's just say November 1st. I'm going to hit OK. You have downloaded one or more records that aren't in your log. Would you like to add them? I'm not going to do that just now because I have something I want to show you. So that's how I would download any updates. Now I hit no, normally I'd hit yes, but I, uh, there's a reason for why I'm not at this moment because I've actually made a few contacts and I'm not uploaded just yet. So I want to show you some things first. Anyway, this is the N3FJP software. This e-logs is where I would go to Logbook of the World and eQSL in order to take my logbook and load it up and download from the internet. So N3FJP Scott. Uh, Scott has put tons of work into these logs and this logging software. If you haven't checked out a site in 3FJP, go do it. I want to close this down. Now, this new form of communication. Let me turn on my radio. This is the emblem 4 WSJTX here, W Whiskey Sierra Juliet Tango X ray. And it's a new mode of data transfer between radios. So I have my computer hooked to my radio. moving my mouse around down here in the corner hopefully my picture is not covered up in the bottom left corner but I'm going to pick a band and I'm going to pick the uh, 17 meter band so therefore my radio just went to it now up above you'll see this blue area that's known as the waterfall and you will see disturbances in the waterfall which are represented by these yellow and red spaces also there's a green line here that you can see and now the disturbances in this waterfall are now coming in as received data and it's call signs of people over here what happens is the radio listen right now I'm just listening but every 15 seconds the radio can transmit for 15 seconds listen for 15 seconds and transmit for 15 seconds and listen for 15 seconds at the bottom of the screen you'll see a growing green bar that goes up to 15 and starts over again so, I'll turn up the volume so you can hear what it sounds like. So you just... Alright, so that's that's kind of what it sounds just Just a beeping tone over the uh, radio waves. And this is what it comes across here on the graph. This column over here that you're starting to see this writing come down you notice this, these gray lines that just represents every 15 second listening set and every 15 second trans, trans uh, I'm listening because again I'm not transmitting at the moment what I do need to do is I need to tune my radio briefly so um, a couple of steps I have to take to tune my radio this particular frequency okay I've tuned so now I'm tuned up. All right. Oh, so here's Cuba. Charlie Oscar 8 uh, Foxtrot Delta. I'm going to double click it. As soon as I double click it, up top of the screen, it takes my red and green bracket over to where he's transmitting. So here's him calling CQ. And now this received frequency, that represents wherever my bracket is, my green bracket. So I answered his call. just said Charlie Oscar 8 Foxtrot Delta KJ4 IEU with my grid square location 
and now I'm receiving for 15 seconds to see if he heard me. Okay, seems that he's talking to N8LU here, so I'm going to hold on a second, and I'm going to try it again. I'm going to hit erase, just to clear my window out. So CO8FD. Okay, he said, he said Roger Roger to a guy here. So you know what? I'm going to Click here and see if I can call him. Okay, so I just now called him. CO8FD, this is KJ4IEU, and I'm in this grid square. So I'm calling him. I actually unchecked marked the box. There's an even and an odd spacing, so I unchecked marked the box so I can get either even or odd set here. Now my radio is monitoring and decoding. So as this green line grows right now, I'm monitoring and you'll notice this decode here will blink briefly. Sorry for th if this is dragging out. What I'm trying to do is make a contact with someone so I, it will be added to my log. And then I can show you how I merge this program's log with my N3FJP log. But I'd like to make a contact here for folks to see it so they can see the whole process. Yep. Wife has asked me about my power output. This is typically a low power thing, but I have a I have to bump my power up because I'm on a wire antenna. It's just a random length and I'm actually tuning to use it. Erase my window, I'll try this guy. KB7 M G C KB7 Mike Golf Charlie. He's calling CQ. In other words, hey anybody out there, this is me. I'd like to make a contact. So he called hello. I answered his call once. And now I'm decoding. Okay. And I might have clicked on him in between runs. So therefore my he just called CQ again. So my radio is answering him again. So now I'm get, I know that I'm getting a full transmission out to him. This go round. And I may be able to hear him. He may not be able to hear me. It may have to do with antenna orientation, power, all kind of factors in there. Oh, okay. Now if you look on the receive frequency side, you'll see that I have a red line in there. The red line means that he has typed in, or he his computer's taken over and his computer answered my computer but over the radio waves. So he answered, KJ4IU, this is KB7MCG plus zero zero, which means that he, he has a good crappie on me. I answered back to him, KB7MCG, this is KJ4IU, I hear you at a negative eight. And then his computer said, or he says to me, Roger, Roger, Roger. And then mine says to him, 73. And then he should return back to 73 to me. You should be decoding it. And it's 15 seconds here. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, sometimes they just move on. Because if I said Roger and he says 73, some people are good with that. And him saying 73 is his way of saying goodbye. Alright, so briefly describe what happened here. I just now hit stop so my waterfall will quit going, my, my receiving will stop so that way all the windows are frozen uh, as they are. In the waterfall over around this area right here that I'm circling my mouse, this 1500, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 2000. So here in this area I saw this gentleman call hello anybody. I clicked on his call sign over here in the purple as soon as I did that, it moved my red and green bracket over to here, which is what this window is, the receive frequency. So now it will start the, the um, stuff that you'll see in this window comes directly from wherever my bracket is. So he called CQ. I answered him. He said, hey, Ed, I got you at this 
at this uh, RST level. I said, Roger, I got you at this RST level. He said, Roger, Roger. And then my computer said 73 to him. And then usually they'll say 73 back. And then that's it. But because uh, on my particular settings, I have it set up to where it says, once, you, once it sees 73 in a transmission, it brings up this prompt to log. Now this is exactly the meat and potatoes over today's video. Here is the, the prompt. And it has in here his call sign, the time of the transmission, what frequency we were on, what mode we were talking at, what my power is set at, and so forth. It popped up in my window. He said, Roger, Roger. I said, 73. We've made contact. So I will hit OK. So it added it to a log. Let me erase these windows. When I have added it to a log, let me show you where this log is. You come over here to File, and Open Log Directory. Okay, here's, here's the new window now. And it says that it's underneath Ed, underneath App Data, underneath Local, then underneath the program WSJTX is where this log window is. It saves the log in two forms. Here's a WSTJX text document. So when I open it up, it's a bunch of just text. But if you'll notice, all the way at the bottom of this text, 2017, November 8th at 1914, uh, Zulu time, I talked to, and I'm circling it with my mouse now, KB7MGC. And, and there talks what frequency, what mode, the RSTs that we sent back and forth, and so forth. So that's that's a text document, and it does every one of those. The other, hello Uncle Joe, the other document that it does it on, it does it on this one here, WSJTX underscore log dot ADI. So those of you that are familiar with the N3 FJP logging software, you can import an ADI file. So what I've done here is I've right click create a shortcut. So now I've made a shortcut and that shortcut sits right here. Okay. So now that shortcut that was there, I can actually cut that shortcut out of there and I'm going to show you where I put it. So let's close this window. We're now going to close this FT8 program. Now I'm going to open up back to my amateur contact log again. So here's my log as it sits. I'm going over here to File, Import ADIF, and I'm going to click there. And paste. So notice here I've pasted the shortcut to the FT8 program's logbook. So the FT8 program has its own ADI log file and I've created a shortcut and put it in my N3 FJP log area. Okay, I'm going to show you where I put that again. Go up to File, Import ADIF. So it's underneath Users, Ed, My Documents, Affirmatch, N3 FJP Software, AC Log, so I wrote all that down, and that's how I knew where to stick that. So that when I now, I've gone to the FT, uh, FT8 program, I'm sitting there making contacts, I have the option of prompt me to log, so it comes up every time I've completed a contact, so I just hit log it, log it. What it prevents me from having to do is write down on a piece of paper, oh, I talked to this guy at this time on this frequency. And then coming over here and typing it into the screen you're seeing now. Typing it all in there. Because what will happen is when I go to upload my log and download a log from the virtual logs that's on the internet. If my time is off then from his time, it will, it will not confirm the contacts. So you don't have a confirmed contact with that person. So, file. Import ADIF. I've placed my shortcut to the FT8 program or WSJTX program. 
I keep saying FT8 program rather than WSJTX and N3FJP. It's a lot of letters, so I know that gets confusing. So I'm going to click that and hit open. Boom. As soon as I did that, notice the very top one here, KB7MCJ, or MGC. That was the last contact I just made, right here at 1914 Zulu. And I made it on 18 megahertz. And here is the double zero for, for an RST that I received. So I, so write that down for those of you taking notes. Step one, this is after you've placed the shortcut in those needed areas. But step one was import ADIF. So now it's imported. But if you notice, there's a big blank spot here where there's nothing written. So I will left click on that one move my mouse up and I'm going to press shift button on my keyboard and now I'm going to left click the top one so I've highlighted or selected just the files just the contacts that I've just now uploaded so that's a way of selecting them all as soon as I've selected them all I'm going to go to edit fill fields determined by call selected records so again that's edit fill the fields determined by call and the selected records which in the background you notice are highlighted blue I will click that it's gonna Scott's written up this big fancy thing it's gonna tell you all about it I just hit OK and now green line goes across and you see it blinking and every once in a while as it blinks down here, sometimes you'll see a, a thing that says new. So notice now it filled in all the names. Now, state and county still open for Bob, Sandra, and, and so and so. But that's because it was the Falkland, Island, Falkland Islands, Uruguay, Chile, and Spain. So Los Angeles, California was that uh, KB7MGC contact. But all the rest of these... Here were, were foreign countries that I actually made contact to. That's what's really neat about that FT8 program. It's so little power required to get the signal out, and it travels so far, and it's, and it's decoded and encoded easily. So I actually just made a contact with the Falkland Islands, uh, which is a new a new place for me to make contact. All right, so file, import ADIF, step one. Step two, edit, fill fields by call sign. Good enough. And now for me, what I do is I go to my e-logs, eQSL, upload all my contacts that haven't been uploaded, and hit done. So now, now they're green for being uploaded. Now I can go to Logbook of the World, upload all my contacts not uploaded. So these are the virtual logbooks. So right here, final status, zero, which means I've had zero errors, and I'll hit done. So I've uploaded all my contacts to uh, those things. And now I can come back also and go um, EQSL download. So now I've uploaded my contacts to these virtual log books, and I'm going to download them. I'm just going to tell you November 1st. I'm going to hit OK. You've downloaded one or more that aren't in your log. Yes, add them. So EA4MD and CX4RX have been updated. I've added one in there. So I'll hit done. So there's a red one, EA4. Now for that Spain one actually, I don't know why it came out 935LVC. I don't know why that is. So they've uploaded on their end. But if you notice, their time is 2023. My time over here is 2023. So that's a duplicate, but they've uploaded it incorrectly or something for their call sign. So I'm going to delete that one. The last two OKs I just hit, it. Just it's resetting my counter here. So that Spain station was actually here, but I could tell it was a duplicate. So I have uploaded and received confirmation that we that we have a contact. All right, I'll go back to e-logs again, go to logbook of the world this time, and 
Now I will do download all since November 1st. Okay. So now here's some updated ones. XQ1KN VP8LP is updated. Anyway, so I'll hit done. So now that has turned into these blue that I've just made. So Uruguay is now blue. So I now have a confirmed contact. And now, what the what I mean by confirmed contacts is because we keep track. So you know, just sitting here on the radio making contacts, uh, you got to set maybe some goals for yourself. So maybe you set the goal for yourself that you'd like to talk to all 50 states or talk to as many CQ zones, just different types of things you could do. And I could hit a button up here and I could say, all right, show me what I've done. So this is on the N3FJP software. I can tell it. Hold on, I'm getting technical advice. Oh, okay, a long book for YouTube. That's a good idea, Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe, uh, well, I guess you all can read the comments. I got my screen minimized because my screen is what I'm using to upload to the world here. Um, so N3FJP logging software contains this thing so you can check to see if you qualify for any awards. So I've opened up the awards tab. I'm going to say, all right, show me only from confirmed contacts that I've got. Calculate that. As soon as I did that, it says for states, I've worked all 50 states. For continents, I've worked six continents. For CQ zones, I worked all those CQ zones. I worked 23 different CQ zones. For counties, 172 counties worked. 2,905 counties remain. So here's all the counties in the United States. Some ham radio guys will just set a goal. I want to talk to someone in every county. And then after they've accomplished that task, you can send in and have yourself sent a certificate. And you hang it up on your wall. I've worked all the counties. And I did it in a mixed mode, meaning I've done some with Morse code, I've done some by voice, I've done some by this FTA program. Then after you've conquered the mixed mode, well, you know what? I want to try it all on uh, 7 megahertz, what we call the 40 meter band. So now you try all the states in 40 meters. Or I want to try all the states in Morse code only. So there's just goal upon goal upon goal you can set upon yourself that just eventually could take a lifetime to finish most of them. Countries worked. It says here that I've worked so far 57 countries. There's a list of all the countries that I've worked. And for the longest time, what, what I really liked about coming to this tab was looking at countries that I've worked, knowing that the only antenna that I have is one that I homemade myself out of 14 gauge wire and PVC pipe and put up out my front yard. And that's the antenna I had to talk to New Zealand, to talk to the Netherlands, to talk to Senegal. It's just really neat to know that. No, I've not talked to Antarctica, and I've been chasing a guy. He was on the other day. There's a Russian guy that's down there at a camp, and he, he published on his site that he'd be there from this time to this time, and he's down there. And I saw him uh, two weeks ago on the radio, and I was chasing him, but I, there's such a, what we call a pile-up. In other words, when one person goes, hey, anybody out there? A thousand people answer every time he says that, so he picks the strongest signal that he hears when he answers. Uh, but I was chasing that Antarctic guy around, I'll tell you. Alright, so this is where I come to check that stuff. So again, that is how and where I get my FT8 program log. Again, file, import, right there, WSJTX, hit open. So that's where that comes from. And then back to my empty desktop. Now, a new day's come, and I want to make more contacts. So there's something you have to remember to do. You're going to open up this program. You've got to have the radio on when you open up this program, because it looks to gain control of the radio. So I've opened the program. Here I am. Before I start anything, first thing that I want to remember to do, because I know that I've uploaded my logs and done all, I've done all the logging, I want to come over to File, 
erase WS, uh, JTX log dot ADI. Confirm. You sure you want to erase that log file? Yep. So basically, what all it is, it is a virtual notepad sitting at your desktop. And as long as you go to File and Settings, and let me find this prompt one that I have set up. Monitor start up. Underneath the reporting tab, the top one, prompt me to log the contact. Check mark that box. And as long as you have that box check marked, now uh, you will have the means in which to uh, log it. It will, it will pop up saying, hey, log me. And you just, you just go ahead and pick it. Absolutely is. What is it? What was his call sign? Uh, I think it was Romeo. Indy Woman. Romeo Romeo. No. call sign that I heard the other day. ANC. There he is. Romeo India 1 ANC. Okay. So I come here and I go to uh, Romeo India 1 ANC. That's his call sign that he was using. And I find him there's Alex Turkiev, Volstock Base, Antarctica, Russia. And here's a picture of the base. Oh, it looks like Upper Peninsula, uh, Michigan there, up in the UP. That's what it looks like up there when they get a little bit of snow. And you can hit Detail, Show Map. And it's... says that it's 9,507 miles, but I did see that Russian station R1ANRI1ANC and RI1 A, uh, I think ANT is the other guy. Anyway, so there he is. Yeah, this QRZ. That, yeah, right. <laughs> So uh, this QRZ.com is a place where we commonly come, uh, us ham radio guys. If you notice over here on the left, I'm signed in. But we have a uh, forum on here where we can, uh, oh my goodness, look at the propagation. The A index is 36. So these this red where it says poor, 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 and band close, band close. It means that 36 is the condition in the atmosphere right now. So there's a lot of atmospheric noise. And if I... Look at my radio scope. My scope is telling me that I'm getting a signal 7 of just atmospheric noise. So just noise alone. So an A index of a 36 is a poor day to try to make any kind of voice communications. So on a day like today, if I was to sit here and try by voice, I would have a very, very hard time of getting anywhere, you know, very far trying to talk. Um, so using on a bad day of an A index, it was really neat to go to an FT8 mode which requires less power but it's just a weak signal transmission type to where you can make actual contacts and confirmed contacts hey you it's me hey me it's you I read you this I read you that roger roger got you got me 73 and you move on you know a lot of people like to get on the radio and, and do what we call rag chew where you just speak and say hey, how you doing I'm Ed I'm from Tennessee and tell all about yourself and get to meet people but there's on days like today that's just a bad condition day for that. Uh, so that makes FT8 a great mode. And N3FJP, Scott, has made that great software that you could go download.
but this qrz.com is a place where we can come to look up call signs so if I look up myself it bring, it's kind of like our own little web page that we can place things on so you notice over here I, I can turn in and, and get a certificate for talking to 100 US counties I've also talked to one uh, 100 grid squares um, here's a picture of me in the front yard a few years back with my homemade antenna sitting in my front yard and it's just a pole there with a couple wires off of it and that's the that's the antenna that I use to make these worldwide contacts to New Zealand and the Netherlands and whatnot so back to my home page here's a, another picture of my antenna out front before I camouflaged it here it is taken down and the parts of my antenna can all go in a duffel bag and then below is a uh, setup that was in an older truck that I had how I had my two radios set up inside the truck uh, so if you have another one KJ4 LCD you can come here oh look at there it's this lady so that's my wife KJ4 LCD and her web page there so all right so we've gone over those two things as far as how to upload and download that log. Go ahead and bring this back up. So now we're big again. Okay, so we've uh, shown you how to create that shortcut and move it to where your logging software lo goes to automatically to find it. So you don't have to keep going through and searching for it. So putting that shortcut first in the in 3FJP folders important. Then after that it's very simple. It's just simply import the log, fill fields by call, upload it to EQSL, upload it to Logbook of the World if you choose, and then uh, going back to your FT8 program and remembering to clean off that virtual pad. Just erase my ADIF file because now I'm done uploading. And you're ready to go. You can just open it right up again prompt me to log my QSOs and now you can use that with confidence knowing that it will be there right there where you left it. Okay, I think that's about it. Uh, let me do this once. I do this a second. I do this. And do this. Yeah, I'll put myself on top of myself. Oh, I just did something else. Not now. Oh, okay, there we go. First, first, oh, let me get this back up, I guess. There we go. Very spicy software. I'd love to know the meds that the guy was taking who wrote it. <laughs> Good question. Not only that, Joe, but in 3FJP, not only is it he made just that software for us hand guys to type in and log our own contacts, but he has, there's all kind of contesting that goes on Morse code contest, uh, phone contest, data contests. He has made individual logs for each of these contests that go on. Each of the 50 states will have a contact party on different weekends throughout the year. And so he has made individual logs for each state's party that they have, what they call a CUSO party. So like the California CUSO party, the, the Tennessee CUSO party. And it's, it's where it's a contest, so it's very fast. It's not about rag chewing. People will just say KJ4 IEU QRZ, and that means hey, who's calling me? Oh yeah, might be, might be, might be. There's a TV show out, Joe, where a guy takes like a clear pill, and it enables his brain to use like 90% of its capabilities. <laughs> Let me scroll in my chat there to see who else chimed in there. Dennis, oh, that's my okay. So Dennis and and Eddie P. Uh, they were on my first version of this, which I hosed because I didn't have my OSB, which is this little black, which is what you're seeing me on now. Um, didn't have it set up right. So on the bottom of my screen there, I didn't have the video capture and the display capture running at the same time. So this is actually the second one. All right. So uh, let's see. I think that's about it. If there's anybody else watching here, my wife just, she might have shut down the phone. So I'm probably one of the three that's watching. But anybody else that's watching, please check in. Also, Joe Kersey's over there in the... I don't even know if I'm pointing to it. But 
Uncle Joe Kersey is there in the con in the in the live chat. So click on him, subscribe to his channel, give him a good watch. Interesting stuff, daily life, you name it. Uh, all right, Uncle Joe, thanks very much for tuning in. Sure appreciate you, and uh, we'll uh, give you a, uh, a, a Skype call another one of these days and have a chat soon. Take care, Uncle Joe. And also, uh, some of my other friends, I think they're on cards up on one of these corners, I think. Uh, I was experimenting with these cards today with my live video feeds, trying to get those things turned on. And I think I have two of them turned on so far, which is In the Trenches with Kaz, Dean Caswell out of Australia, and Lone Stag Bushcraft Outfitters. Outdoors. Outdoor fitters. Outdoor critters. Oh, the boss is hollering at me from the other room correcting me so I know what I call this. Lone Stag, Bushcraft, and Outdoors. With underscores in between them. But, like I said, it like cards. Up here in the corner, maybe if you click up here in the corner, you'll see things. It says cards. There's a little eye up there somewhere. Left is right, right is left, and you're looking at yourself, and it's backwards, and it just messes you all up. Okay, so Uncle, Uncle Joe's out of there. We'll see Uncle Joe. Wife's going out to go get the mail. So, sorry about this very impolite light coming in here from the side. Uh, what are some other things? Other things, other things. I think that's about all I have at the moment ready for the video. Um, I probably need to go ahead and shut this one down, and then send this link to a few of the gentlemen who were requesting this, and hopefully this is a good format. Other than me rambling on here for now, for however long I've been on. So I should probably go and shut this off and get to it, get it published, and then I'll let these guys watch it. So hey YouTube, thanks for checking in with me, thanks for watching. Uh, Dennis and Eddie Key, sorry about the first version of this that I goobered it up, so I hope that you came back and was able to watch this. And that's about it. So, I'm Ed, or KJ4IEU, however you know me at the moment. Talk to you soon.